Integrity, to me, is a lot about doing what we say we're going to do. It's about gaining and maintaining the trust of the public. Good morning, Andrew. More than $5 trillion in wealth has been lost in the stock market so far this year, but some insiders and some of the biggest losers cashed out before the big drop. Because if we didn't have integrity, you know, no one would trust us. No one would put their money in the market. Alone, 2021 was a record year for insider sales. Total sales for insiders totaling $170 billion. Integrity is about your speech and your actions and whether they are consistent with a higher moral principle. Bill Hinman recently outlined the approach we take to evaluate whether a digital asset is a security. And I encourage you to take a look at Bill's speech, which is available on our website. These tests are so broad and they're so qualitative that they're always going to be, there will always be some uncertainty unless the regulators uh, either give some real clear guidance, which we don't see happening for some time. Now, some of you, some market participants may call this regulation by enforcement. I just call it enforcement. In the meantime, if we're just dealing with today's law and you know the, the guidance that we have there, um, I, I'm not optimistic that it's going to be really clear that this will work and that won't work. The law is clear. Yeah. The law is clear. It's not about waving a wand. Congress okay. spoke about this in 1934. They amended these laws multiple times since over nine decades. Yeah, it's hard to imagine a lot of good guidance coming out that made people feel like they had a, a super high level of certainty. The staff comes together and, and seeks to solve problems. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And in this video, let's catch up to speed on the SEC versus Ripple. Also, the suit that was filed by the Empower Oversight and some odd findings related to all of this. First, let's break down that intro. Let's go. The SEC, with their narrative of protect the retail investor and overreaching into crypto is just such a sham. You see the tweet here by Ryan Salkis, Bitcoin is down 57% from its all-time high. In other words, it's holding up better than Netflix, Block, PayPal, DoorDash, Palantir, Pinterest, Snowflake, Spotify, Zoom, Zillow, Peloton, Opendoor, and DocuSign in this market correction. The five trillion that was lost in the traditional markets? Well, you and I don't have to be an accredited investor to invest in those particular stocks. But the insider sales, they had a record $170 billion. We're talking big payouts. The Peloton CEO went away with 500 million. Carvana, the executives took half of the company's market cap. Palantir CEO went away with $1 billion and Coinbase, Brian Armstrong, he was able to sell his stock at the day of IPO for $389. It's now selling for just a little over $50. This market is rigged. And if you think there's going to be investor protection by the SEC if they get their hands on crypto, you got to be kidding me. You'll never convince me that that is the case. And back to the intro, you notice that this was Jay Clayton. He was giving the speech while he was the chair and used the word we, we, we so many times in referencing the free pass speech by Hinman. That video is gone. Wheezy on Twitter, he's known as at Nerd Nation, on box, he had taken a screenshot and you can see in the center there, this is the SEC website, that video was posted. And here's the website today. And that video is indeed gone. It just gets more bizarre the farther we go. Here we have Hinman just a few days ago and he's 
talking about how it's hard to imagine that any good guidance is going to come out and confirms that the law is unclear, yet you have Gensler insisting it's clear. This agency is an embarrassment. I agree with Chip here. He sent out a tweet uh, for how incredibly blessed the crypto community is to have a world-class journalist and business network on this story. And he's speaking of Eleanor Tourette, yet she is doing a really fabulous job. And Charles Gasparino is also really doing the work to bring it to the masses. It's going to help us with the momentum that we need to get an investigation done. As of March 2nd, 2022, you can see Fox Business Network Cudlow top CNBC for the fifth consecutive month. So they do have a lot of eyes on that network and it does make a difference. Does CNBC do any investigations? Well, in going to their investigations website, I only see seven stories that were done this year in 2022. And no, I can't say anything stands out. We can use all the help we can get. So I reached out to the Global Investigative Journalism Network. I gave them a lead to this story and five areas that will bring them up to speed on why the SEC and Hinman needs to be investigated. We are pointing now to John Deaton's granted amicus curiae representing 67,000 XRP holders in the SEC versus Ripple case, also to his crypto law US timeline. That is undisputed with all the facts. And they really should look at the Empower US suit against the SEC because there is an enormous amount of proof that there was conflict. And the library case, absolutely. And also J.W. Verrett. He is an excellent quality source because he is also on the advisory board for the SEC and he has been speaking out as to the regulatory actions that have taken place. The Global Investigative Journalism Network, I hope they pick up this story. They have staff that is based in 22 countries on five continents. They also have 227 member groups in 88 countries. In terms of their website visitors, readers from 185 countries visit their website each week. They also do a little training and outreach in 30 different countries every year. They have a help desk with the queries where they are receiving over 2,300 help requests annually. And for social media, they distribute their latest tips and tools in 12 languages daily. It is so serious that this story is now being covered in the Law 360 publication. The Empower Oversight Whistleblowers and Research claims that Hinman didn't follow the instructions that the SEC's Ethics Office gave him to avoid conflicts tied to his financial interest in Simpson Thatcher. A mighty investigation is just around the corner. Just about 58 minutes ago, the CFTC chairman joined Squawk Box on CNBC, and they're talking about how to regulate crypto. Here is the latest. I mean, there is there is some disagreement between the two agencies about who should be in charge here, right? Well, I wouldn't say there's disagreement. You know, we're each trying to do what's best. And right now, and we saw this last week, a lot of people got hurt. A lot of uh, value was lost in the market. And there really are no customer protections right now. We have a number of state level uh, regulations and oversight, but in terms of market oversight, in terms of disclosures, we don't really have much right now as it relates to traditional financial markets. I've made this argument before our markets, whether it's the derivatives market or the securities markets are the, the best in the world because of the regulations we have, the accountability and the enforcement behind the legal structure. And I think it's important as we continue to see this market scale, and integrate itself into more traditional financial markets, we need to put forward a regulatory framework that will protect customers, make appropriate disclosures, 
And ultimately, for those who support the industry, I think support its growth and maturity over the next couple of years. So regardless of what the narrative might be about the differences between us and the SEC, I think we're both like-minded in the fact that we want to regulate this thoughtfully, protect customers, protect financial stability, and we'll figure out the details of what might constitute a security, what might constitute a commodity, and do what we've done in the past, whether it was after the financial crisis or going back many decades when we had to parse out security futures and commodity futures. And that wasn't all he said. He also weighs in on some specifics. Here you go. There's a lot of back and forth. There's a, a Senate bill that's made its way through uh, that uh, would leave the SEC in charge of a large portion of the oversight. I think it would move some of the regulation to the CFTC. Have you? Are you familiar with that bill? And what do you think of it? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is a little bit of an age-old issue between the CFTC and the SEC. We have a great relationship historically. We continue to communicate and work together. We have a lot of common registrants, but. Within this space, you know, in my view, it makes sense for commodities to be regulated by the Commodity Futures Trading Commission and securities to be regulated by the SEC. And within the, the sphere of digital assets and the coins, which make up thousands and thousands, there are naturally going to be some commodities and some securities. And in my view, it makes sense to sort of parse through the two and figure out where we can place each. And it's going to be difficult because from a legislative standpoint, um, again, given what I said earlier, given the novelty of some of these uh, um, coins and the technology, we're going to have to figure out what would constitute a security under the traditional securities law and what would constitute more of a commodity so that we can regulate appropriately given the two different uh, legal structures. Yeah, it's tricky. It's all in the eye of the beholder. The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, has said he thinks most of those tokens are securities under the law right now. Does that sound about right to you? Well, I, you know, I could say for sure Bitcoin, which is the largest of the coins and has always been the largest, regardless of the total market cap of the entire, um, you know, uh, digital asset market capitalization is a commodity. So um, Ether as well, I've argued this before, my predecessors have as well, is a commodity. So there may be, in fact, hundreds, if not thousands of security coins, uh, but there are plenty of commodity coins. And I think it makes sense as we've done historically to make sure that each agency has jurisdiction over commodities and security. So you heard today from Rostin Benin, the CFTC chairman, he thinks that Ethereum is a commodity. So maybe Ethereum is in the clear. How interesting. All right, everybody, let's jump to the fluff. We're starting to hear rumors that Japan is gonna open the country back up to foreigners starting in June. And if you want to eat a little crazy food when you come, well, I think Pizza Hut has it. This is an Oreo cookie pizza. It is made with Parmesan, salted and popcorn chicken, fried calamari, onions, and lots of mozzarella cheese. If this doesn't get your fancy, there is plenty of food and some of it quite crazy that you can have fun with. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.